guys. I'm on the way to pick up some paint for the decorators because they have run out. So yeah, just got a nip about eight miles away to go and get some uh, paint for them. They ran out of flooring yesterday. The flooring guys ran out of flooring so they couldn't finish. Um, and now we run out of paint. So things are starting to uh, get to the end of everything. But yeah, no, it's almost done now. The house is almost done, like the floor's down. Uh, we're just basically waiting for a few little bits and pieces like touching up paint, doing skirting boards, things like that. So yeah, up till um, about one o'clock last night, me and Sarah just putting together furniture and oh man, it's just, yeah, it's just so much to do. Anyway, it's been about two weeks. I feel like I've shot loads of different sort of videos and I haven't actually really kind of edited any. I'm starting to catch up now, um, but yeah, you'll have to bear with me a little bit because normally I like to post like a couple of, couple of videos a week or maybe like even more, but um, you know, time permitting at the moment, it's, um, it's not so much the videos themselves, shooting the videos, it's, it's actually kind of editing time. Um, but you know, it's understandable I suppose. <laughs> Should have put up a video um, of like another e-bike video actually, um, just a little short um, video. It's the it's e-bike the e and the quad bike video. So if you haven't seen that, go check it out. Um, but yeah, it's a bit of fun, just like had a little bit of time and I just thought, you know, I'm gonna go and check out like the area. There's so much to explore around kind of this area. So yeah, I thought I'd just make a start on that. Um, yeah, I've been wanting to run a little bit more power on the bike. Um, you know, normally I run it in kind of normal mode and it's like about, I think it's probably about sort of nine or 10 kilowatts. Um, maybe not as much as that, but um, I've been wanting to sort of run it more on the boost setting, which is pretty much unlimited. Um, and I've been having trouble with the, uh, yeah, with, with, with it cutting out my circuit breaker because I've only got a C63 circuit breaker. So I've ordered another one of those, which has turned up. So I'll add that in at some point and I'll probably, probably sort of show you how I'm gonna do that. Um, that will just give it a lot more power and you know and all that and I was a bit nervous I think I mentioned in the last video I was a bit nervous about um, battery the battery side of things um, you know I was getting sort of I thought I was getting decreased range but I don't think it is I think it's more to do with um, just trying to look at my sat nav as well at the same time uh, I think it's more to do with kind of not fully charging the battery so yeah I don't know I think it's I think it's sort of fine so I got that to put in I also trashed my mud hugger as well my um, mud guard for the back you might have seen that I took it off while I was doing the stand um, while I was actually putting the stand on I actually um, messed it up so and it got really scratched as well whilst it was in storage so I've um, got a new one of those to put on I've been a bit slack on this whole MSVA test thing um, and it's kind of things are just going through my mind at the moment like I, I originally set out on this to kind of go and you know get the test done and the test is almost pretty much booked but I've got a couple of little things still to do like mirrors on the bike and um, all that to get it through the test but I don't know I've had a little cooling down period a little cooling off period about the whole thing because I got really kind of into it at one point and um, yeah I don't know I'm not so enthusiastic about it now I don't know why. I know I've been seeing like a few comments and stuff about people saying, um, you know, what's the point? Why, do you, why are you going to bother? And you know, I always got those points. I always kind of thought, yeah, you have got a point, a valid point. You can't go anywhere on the bike, you know, if you once you, you know, register it. I mean, you can because you can take the number plate off or whatever and all that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've gone to a lot of trouble to basically convert it this way. And I actually love the way the bike is at the moment. It's almost like, it's perfect. Like I've got headlights, proper headlights, proper indicators. And even if you're not actually, you know, using the bike to, uh, as a proper um, road legal mode of transport, it's actually blooming brilliant. Because if you've got indicators, the way people, indicators and brake lights, the way people like respond to you on the road is just completely different to when you're on a, on a, on a bicycle. So for that reason, I'm loving it. And the attention the bike has been getting with that headlight on the front, I mean, it got attention before, um, but it's gone through the roof. I mean, I literally can't go to, I can't go anywhere without getting stopped these days. And it's, you know, <laughs> it's fine. I, lo I love it when people, I love talking about the bike, but when um, it's got to the point where I just wanted to go do a quick errand and I can't even, I can't even go to the 
like a curry house or whatever because I get stopped and you know then my food gets cold and everything like that. So I love I don't you know I'm not I'm not bothered about it. I just um, feel free to just stop me at any time when you see if you do see me on the bike. Um, I always want to talk to you, but um, <laughs> it's kind of like it's gone through the roof. It's just I don't know whether it's the headlight or whether it's just e-bikes are becoming a little bit more acceptable and people are more kind of into it now. I definitely think there's a time for everything. Like, I mean, e-bikes have been around for a long time, but I think it's time for this sort of bike. Um, it really is. So yeah, I mean, I'm, I will do it. I will get to this MSV A test sorted out once um, once the house stuff calms down. Um, but yeah, it's just kind of like it's not top of my priority list at the moment. Um, I'm just, I think the bike's perfect as it is, and I'm riding it around towns. I mean, if I suddenly got started getting stopped, um, which ugh, I don't know, I mean, it's, it's probably unlikely, but it's possible um, that anything could happen to the bike. I don't know. You hear all these stories about people getting their bikes seized and things like that, but I think I think it's pretty unlikely to be honest, unless you're just being stupid. Um, but anyway so if you are interested in the msva side of things um yeah don't don't worry i'm gonna be i'm gonna get to it and, and, and sort it and actual fact the, the most enduring part of the process is sorting out all of the intricacies with the bike like the indicators and everything else so i hope you guys have found that interesting um so don't think i'm gonna bail on the project i'm not gonna bail on the project guys um and it's I'm, it's nothing to do with the comments that people have written um, things like that, um, you know, I don't care about that. I do what I want to do. I'm not bothered about what people say in comments. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to probably just put put it on hold for the moment, and um, yeah, just come back to it, pick it up in a little bit of time once I get straight. Anyway, looks like I'm pretty much near where I'm supposed to be, and I just need to look at the map to find out where this paint place is. It's currently waiting at a level crossing which is just going up as i'm speaking now um yeah so what else has been happening um on the electric side of things um i've got the electric lawnmower which finally it was a nightmare to find but i actually managed to find it <coughs> um and it's by a company called greenworks and i started a little um couple of video clips on that so i'll probably stick them in as i'm talking but yeah it's absolutely fantastic it's, it's basically like a, a 46 centimeter lawnmower um and it's completely electric powered it comes with um it doesn't come with a battery actually i, I had to um, order a battery separately which is <coughs> half the cost of the mower itself um and basically yeah it's just fully electric it's self-propelled as well and the blooming thing is so powerful um i mean i've never had a petrol lawnmower because i've never had i've never had a garden this big before so i've never um never needed to have like a, a powerful mower or any mower to be honest um but this thing is just fantastic you just push a button push a couple of safety uh, buttons and the blades start um and then basically you pull another lever and it self propels along and the little motor on the back that um, pulls it along or pushes it along from the back is absolutely it's crazy it, it, i mean it probably goes faster than i can walk um in that respect so yeah it's, it's, it's really good and i've managed to do pretty much my whole lawn it'll probably do one and a half um of my front lawns i've got a front and a back lawn um but i i think i did my front lawn and i was stopping and starting and i was you know move, uh, messing around with it a little bit just done over about half the lawn and just check the battery level two bars out of four so as I was thinking, I think like two amp hours battery is probably a little bit on the meagre side, but I don't know, we'll see how far it gets. So yeah, I did, I managed to do one of my lawn, like my front lawn, um, on one charge, and it was, there was a fair bit of grass, so um, it, you know, it probably, in, in normal, in a normal circumstances, it probably, probably would actually do a little bit more. But yeah, it's only like a two amp hour battery. Um, it's a 60 volt, two amp hour battery, which I thought was really low in capacity um, to start with. But they're obviously getting the bulk of the power from the voltage rather than um, the current. I think they do a four amp hour battery, um, but the two amp hour battery is like 160 quid. That's without the charger. So um, it gets pretty expensive if you start getting the higher capacity battery. And the batteries you can use on other stuff as well. They do like a whole range of stuff, um, Greenworks, 
um, strimmer, hedge cutter, loads of different things like that. So yeah, I'm definitely gonna get the strimmer, um, uh, but I think they were struggling with supplier for, for, um, for this stuff because I think it's just been really, really popular. I can see why, it's unbelievable, it really is. The power is just, well, I'd, I'd say it's probably, I've not used the petrol lawnmower, but if, if a petrol, I can't imagine a petrol lawnmower is, is that good and that reliable, it's not gonna be. So yeah, that is a fantastic bit of kit, really recommend it. Um, and I'll leave links and stuff in the descriptions for that, for that as well. Um, but other than that, I think that's, I think that's it. I think that's what's been going on. A um, couple of people showed interest in the um, in the 4G side of things. I'm absolutely rinsing through data at the moment. Um, we got we had a 64 gigabyte SIM card, and that is long gone. About I don't know, probably about a week ago now. So we probably used like 64 gigabytes in a week, um, <laughs> which is kind of understandable. There's only me and Sarah in the house, but we're pretty much solidly on the internet doing something on the internet. Yeah at all times so whether there's not something downloading also my camera my nest camera um, which i've put one up so far and on the highest setting that uses about 100 I said it can use up to about 100 gigabytes is that right 100 gigabytes in a um in a month for hd video so i've turned the quality down on that but since then i've found a sim card which is supposed to be unlimited um, on three and it's only like a one month contract as well now a lot of people are saying oh yeah but you can't put that into um, a hotspot and I don't know I'm, I need to test this out properly I've just realized I haven't told you what I've done um, the 4G router which you saw in the other video what I did was put it in the loft I went up into the loft space and I kind of got it into the best position I possibly could um, because downstairs the signal wasn't particularly great um, it was okay, but I was getting something like, I don't know, 15 megabits down and, you know, four up, which is probably all right, but for sort of uploading 4K videos, it's gonna take forever. So what I then did was I found like a, um, a 4G antenna and um, I put that on the actual router itself and stuck it on the window and I was getting up to about, I don't know, 60 megabits down, but only about 10 up. I was thinking this is this is weird. So knowing a little bit about radio and the way it works, routers generally the signal coming in, the uplink from the um, or the downlink from the from the mast is going to be a lot stronger because you've got a massive great tower, um, you know, running at full power. And the, the line of sight is going to be better between you and the the tower. The uplink is actually your radio, your signal going to the tower. So um, if you've your router isn't going to put out much power at all probably one watt or three watts or something like that so it's a, it's a small amount of power um, so you need to get your uplink or your you need to get your router basically in a very very good position so that it gets a good up and a good down signal I actually found like a little antenna on Amazon um, which looks pretty good it had quite a short run of um, feeder coax because that is very lossy um, which causes a lot of problems if you you know have a long way a long run of cable you're gonna it's no point using an external antenna so anyone that's tried it before will know that sometimes you put an external antenna on like a, a phone or anything of a high frequency and you just will not get any better reception than you would on the aerial on the device now the frequencies we're dealing with are like microwaves so it's very 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 high frequency um, and it just basically doesn't travel through cables very well um, and it, you get a lot of loss so that's the reason so I tried that wasn't expecting much but it it kind of did improve the downlink the downlink went up to like about 80 um, so <laughs> that's fantastic but the only problem is the uplink was was appalling because you've got this you know feeder in between that's or coax cable in between that's just burning off half the off all your signal so as a compromise what I did I went into the loft and I installed um, the router on one of the joists in the loft and kind of pointed it towards roughly it's, it's not a directional antenna on, on the router but I went back to the um, the existing antennas that they just screwed directly onto the onto the router and if you've got a bad signal that's probably the best thing you can do because you then you can move the whole router um, to get the best signal and you're not getting any loss between the, the cables those antennas aren't great anyway um, I'm not saying they are but um, it sometimes makes a lot of difference and lo and behold I managed to get 25 to 30 down and 25 to 30 up 
exactly the same. Interestingly, that that kind of actually backs up my theory where um, you know using using the actual antennas on the device is, is better. Uh, so yeah, I've done that, and, and I'm kind of happy with, with where that is, and I've installed it in the um, loft space and I've got like a, one of those power line adapters which uses the mains um, power to send your ethernet up to 600 megabits or whatever over there so I've got that in the house and I've got a couple of those dotted around downstairs and we have full-blown 25 to 30 megabit um, internet at home and that is infinitely better than anything you can get on a cable I've done extensive searching around that area and it's about you know your, your average line speed is about one to three um, megabits a second which is appalling for the rural area so other options like um, rural Wi-Fi not available there's doesn't, nothing that covers that area we're so close to Stansted Airport it's just absolutely baffles me why we can't have you know why we haven't got fast internet in that area so I don't know anyway so that's the solution um, but then the next problem is obviously the data is just through the roof so yeah this three sim card i found is unlimited it says you can't use it as a personal hotspot but my argument is it's not a personal hotspot it's actually the device itself is a router um, and it will just should just appear on their network as a phone so um, we're going to test that out and see if that works um, and yeah see what it is the worst case it will get classed as a personal hotspot and they've got like a 30 gigabyte allowance um, and that plan is something like 20 I think it's like 30 quid a month. So even if I have the two, that's costing me 50 pounds a month. Um, you know, it's still not getting getting me to ex my exact data needs. But to be honest, f you know, for what I do with my business, I need I need internet. So if there's no other way and it needs to be fast, then it, it would just, just have to pay just have to pay the price until a better solution comes along. Um, so yeah, it's all it's all tax deductible stuff. So that that helps in that way. Anyway, guys, I'm at the paint shop, so catch you in a bit. Do the coffee. Noisy old hall road petrol driven thing. really good like, road surface to ride the booster board on, just epic. 